Oh my gosh, this is legit on me. Um, this is a, it's called the King's Gambit, the story of Hikaru, published February 20th, 2021. I don't believe it. They actually did a video on me. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna watch it. Okay, let's see. And Chess.com is here with the 2019 US champion, now the five time winner, Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. First of all, congratulations. Thank you, Mike. It feels good to win again. But for much of my career, much of my life, I've sort of been the bad guy. Very oftentimes, I've always been perceived as the person who people don't want to root for, who people don't like. The car was like, oh, that guy has more money than me and he gets more viewers, so I'm gonna try to get in on that. Because he only cares if the people he's supporting act the exact way he wants. Checkmate, good game. Particularly quick. You know, it's funny too, like, uh, Aside from this, I would say this is really funny. Um, this this part where I was in billions, because in many ways this preceded everything. Like this really, it preceded um, preceded everything that happened. Like I remember, I think it was like December. It was like December 2019 or January 2020. And um, and the guys over over at billions, they asked if I wanted to do a cameo, and um, and I did that. And it was like it was very shortly after, like one month after that, everything kind of um everything kind of changed with COVID um, and everything kind of became different. So in many ways, it was funny because I did this and I just started blowing up in like March and then in April, it, it all blew up. It was December 8th, okay. Um, but it all blew up like in April of 2020 when this, this episode came out right during the midst of the whole, um, of the whole, whole uh, pandemic. So let's keep going. Actual paid actor, yeah, let's keep watching. Thank you, Karu. Drastic measures to halt the spread of that deadly virus. Wuhan, China, ground zero for the outbreak, now under lockdown. That dude is really funny, really entertaining. He networks with people. I think you could get literally any game to go Also, through. by the way, by the way, to everybody who's busy hating on me, saying that I, I don't like Barca, I don't like Messi, I'm sorry, but you guys are very wrong. I'm just very objective. Let's that dude is really funny, really entertaining. He networks with people. I think you could get literally any game to go big on Twitch if you had the right name behind it. And I think somebody like totally that. Totally agree. Ah! Check me! Enjoy the ELO loss, bitch! <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I sucked out. Oh, I'm so terrible at chess. I can also trade and take and take and if takes, I take, if takes, 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 queen e2. Queen h4, g3, knight g3, check, c6, queen b7, knight h1, king there. I don't know what's going on. I'm just gonna castle. I, I don't wanna think too much. Everything I do, I don't do it lightly. There's no time for fun and games. You have to like make the most of your life no matter what it is or else or else you're, uh, you're, you're wasting your life. Wow, this is serious. Hikaru Nakamura is a man of many accomplishments. He drew the chess world's attention to the United States by winning trophy after trophy throughout his career. And Chess.com is here with the 2019 U.S. champion, now the five-time winner, Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. First By the way, th this is the this is the total Chad walk. I'm doing the total Chad walk, just like just like Ali Reza, Ali Reza and, and Tata Steele. I mean, I'm doing the exact same thing. It's a total Chad walk. So it's such a Chad. Let's keep going. Congratulations. Thank you, Mike. It's, it feels good to win again. In 2003, he became a record-breaking Grandmaster. Nakamura is now 27, and he became the youngest grandmaster in American history when he was just 15. Oh gosh! Eh, eh, what is that? Eh, eh, what is that? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, gross. Absolutely gross. That is so gross. Terrible. 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 Ugh. Okay, let's keep going. Bobby Fischer had held the record for nearly half a century. He plays one of the most Wait, actually wait a second. Let's go back. Wait, wait, one second. Fischer had held the record for nearly half Oh, you know what you guys? I know exactly where this is from, by the way. Um I don't know why St. Louis had this picture, but this is a picture of me um this is from when I played the United States Chess Open. It was the Open Championship in the United States and actually um in 1998, I believe, in uh, it was in Kona, Hawaii. And the reason that I can now tie this into another story is I remember at that tournament, um, I actually played in a simultaneous exhibition against Judith Polgar. And in that same tournament, Judith Polgar would go on to win the tournament. In her final round, she would beat Joel Benjamin to win the United States Chess Championship, or the Open Championship, I should say. Let's keep going. Half a century. He plays one of the most challenging games in the world at breakneck speeds. I can also trade and take and take and if takes, I take, if takes, 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 queen e2, queen h4, g3, knight g3, check, c6, queen b7, knight h1, king there. 
I don't know what's going on. I'm just going <laughs> to castle. I, I don't want to think too much. And most recently, Hikaru breathed new life into a game that has existed for nearly 1,500 years by playing chess with some of the biggest streamers on the planet. Felix! The best move would be to move my bishop, right? To e3? <laughs> That's a move, yeah. Mm. He makes a stalemate. He makes a stalemate. Nope. I'll draw. <laughs> what the heck? Oh no. Does that count oh, as no. a win or do I have to beat you again? Okay, now actually what happens here is I have checkmate in one. Um, so I play this rook takes and this is actually checkmate. Because you see my bishop protects this knight <laughs> and your king can't go anywhere here. But before any of that happened, Hikaru's mother made the fateful decision to move from Japan to the United States, along with her two children. Hikaru's older brother, Asuka, was- So just one, one bit that I'll add. So when they say my mom moved uh, from Japan to the US, my mom actually is American. She did study abroad. Um, she was going to college. Uh, she's going to Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado. And in her third year, I believe it was, she did study abroad. She went to Japan. Um, and she, she met my biological father, got married, and so she stayed in Japan for 10 years. So I thought I would just add that so you guys are aware, because they don't, they don't say that here. Um, but she is, she is American. She did study abroad and then came back um, after they got divorced. It's the first of the two boys to take an interest in chip. Also, this, um, this is a crazy picture, because, like, first of all, this is my brother, obviously. This is not me. This is my brother. But this, this is my uh, stepfather, of course, here. And... Um, Ugh, how do I say this? I try not to be emotional a little bit. This is my stepfather, obviously. But um, I was I was watching that uh, that one million video the other day. I'm I'm just I'm not gonna pause that much because it is 15 minutes. But um, what I want to say is it, it's kind of it's uh, it's it's emotional for me because in the one million video the other day, my um, my stepfather he did uh, he he was in the video congratulating me. And um, one thing I notice is like I oftentimes when I think about like my mom or my 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 stepdad, um, you know, you kind of remember them as being young. And then, like, in the video, his hair is, like, almost completely gray. And so, like, kind of when I see this sort of, uh, this, this image, it's like he, he is, uh, ugh, sorry. He, he, of course, he has a, a head full of black hair, and so it just reminds me how fast time passes. Let's keep yes. going. Helped along by the influence of their stepfather, FIDE master, Sunil Wibomachri. Then when I started dating his mom, and Hikaru didn't play chess. I mean, he was, he was a pain in the neck at that What, what is this, by the <laughs> way? Or, or wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. I got to go back. I got to go back just because I have to move my cam. Sorry, I have to move my cam. I have to move my cam, sorry, just for the next bit. There we go. Sunil Wibomachri. Then when I started dating his mom, and Hikaru didn't play chess. I mean, he was he was a pain in the neck at that time. <laughs> and, uh, and it was like, you know, I mean, Asuka was a chess player. After Asuka began competing nationally, the family often traveled across the country to attend events. And it wasn't long before the six-year-old Hikaru found himself eager to get off the sidelines and compete. I didn't want him at first to play chess because I thought it was unfair to have him measure up to his brother who was very good. Right. You know, I thought that was putting too much of a burden, so I tried to, but the more I pushed him away, the more interested he became. <laughs> and Hikaru's determination to test himself against others, even at the age of seven, led him to winning his first tournament ever. By the time he turned nine, his parents made the decision to homeschool him so that he could focus on improving at chess. And when he was 10, Hikaru overtook his brother, earning the title of chess master. But the real turning point came when, at 15 years and 79 days, Hikaru broke Bobby Fischer's 1958 record to become the youngest American grandmaster ever. <laughs> As a player, Hikaru quickly became known for his aggressive play style. Bullet? Unpredictable. Weird, I would say, uh, as a player from shop. Wild, aggressive, tricky. He spent countless hours playing chess online, but as he told Tanya Sachdev in 2017, eventually he found out that it was more important to study your opponent's strategies at the highest <laughs> level of the game. Well, when you start out, it depends what you can get away with, what you can't get away with, and kind of learning. You know, figuring out how to how to understand what what works and what doesn't. And when you play against the best players in the world, I mean, you can try certain things, but you have to be um, much more practical. And I think that's that's it's a natural evolution. It's how things evolve um, for for all the top players. I think. Still, his foray into the world of online chess showed Hikaru a way to bring more new players into the fold. 
If someone was good enough, playing online gave them a way to test their skills against grandmasters and learn from the experience. Again, I'm starting at 500, which also means the people who are near the bottom of this will have the chance to play against. But usually when I do the viewer speedruns on my main accounts, I end up playing only people who are 2,000 or better. So this gives everyone a great, great opportunity. In the meantime, Hikaru continued to climb the ranks of competitive chess. He represented the United States at five chess Olympiads, winning a gold medal and two team bronzes, as well as picking up a number of other prestigious chess trophies along the way. Hikaru excelled at one style of play in particular, blitz chess. Three to five minute matches that, unlike classical chess, allow players mere seconds to make their move. Yes. Hey, I think it's, yeah, check and check and check me. Yeah, there we go. Being the world's greatest player in what is arguably the most entertaining type of chess to watch made Hikaru the face of the game for many By people. the way, since probably no one has seen this background, this is actually my, this is still uh, my background in, um, in, in New York, uh, in White Plains at my parents' house. Um, so this is still my background. You see, there are these posters on the background. I'll give you guys a little bit of lore here. So these posters on the background that you see, they are from, um, they're from Star Wars Episode One: Phantom of the Menace. And um, the reason I remember this is because there, this was right before... I think there was a tournament called, uh, I think it was the cadet championship best players under like 16 years old in um, in the U S and it was held, I believe in, um, in Nashville, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think it was Nashville, but anyway, the point is I remember these posts cause we went to, um, I think it was Taco Bell. And at the time Taco Bell was giving out these posters. So like I went and got my, whatever meal I had to get to get the poster for, um, from Taco Bell to get the full thing of the Phantom of the Menace. So it was from Taco Bell. Um, I have some trophies here on the right. Uh, there's some shells, map of the world. There's this nice little puzzle. You guys can't tell because my face is in the way. But this nice hand, hand puzzle that I did, it's of uh, Abbotsville, the former former stadium where the Brooklyn Dodgers used to play nearly, um, nearly 60 years ago or 70 years ago now. So there's that. Um, Behind, on top of my head, you see there's also a placard right above my headphones. This was a proclamation to the to, for the city of White Plains given to me by the mayor at the time, Joseph Delfino, I think around like 2004, 2005. So I, I, there's a proclamation in the background as well. Um, let's keep, And then, then one last thing, this picture here, you can't see it off to the right. I believe this was a picture of my brother playing in the national championships in, I believe it was Knoxville, Knoxville Tennessee in 1992, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it was a little bit, I think it was 92 or was it 93? But I think it's from Knoxville when he played. So let's keep going. Arguably the most entertaining type of chess to watch made Hikaru the face of the game for many casual fans. I think any game, however boring, no offense, I love chess, okay? However boring the game is, which chess is, if you have the right person behind it, you can sell anything. And mm -hmm. the Hikaru guy or whatever, Hikaru? Hikaru? I don't know how to yeah. pronounce it. Like, that dude is really funny, really entertaining. He networks with people. I think you could get literally any game to go big on Twitch if you had the right name behind it. And I think somebody like totally that. Totally agree. Hikaru was out to show people that chess was more than just an ancient board game for the elite. And what came next helped him do just that in a way that not even a chess grandmaster could have predicted. Oh, Jan was there. You saw Jan to my right. Jan the was there. The mystery virus started here in the city of Wuhan. Measures to halt the spread of that deadly virus. Wuhan, China, ground zero for the outbreak now under lockdown. The city of 11 million now halting all public transportation and outbound flights. We will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods. We'll stop all gatherings of more than two people in public. That both Canada and the United States will temporarily restrict all non-essential travel across the Canada-US border. The global pandemic that put life on hold for just about everyone also put a stop to all real-life chess tournaments. But Hikaru needed an outlet to compete, and so he decided to turn his occasional Twitch streams into a full-time pursuit. I should, um, so some of the side things came out, you see they came out. I should put the replacements in, I should like tape it together and sell it, uh, I should sell it for uh, $200,000. That's actually what I should do. Cause I mean- By the way, fun fun fact, I'm gonna pause one more time very briefly. That mouse that I did, someone did donate $1,000 to a, a, I think there was a, a COVID relief fund if I'm not mistaken. And so that mouse that I said I would sell, I actually, someone did did donate, I will give it to them. Unfortunately, I was unable to, to you know, basically ship it to them. Um, when I was in Florida, so it's still sitting in Florida. And if the guy who, who donated the $1,000 um, is in chat or wondering, I am going to mail it to you whenever I get back to Florida. Let's keep going.
I mean, it's, it's a mouse. I mean, a mouse is, is more durable. It has more quality than a banana, so why can't I sell this mouse for $200,000, oh, right? Okay. What Akaru didn't realize at the time was that he was about to change the way people thought about chess forever. Unlike many other notable players out there, Akaru Actually, wait, what just happened? I was going to go get a banana, but the banana, banana that I had on my counter, it vanished, so it didn't work. I was just going to go get banana for content. Let me put myself up here for right now. Okay, let's keep going. Mouse for $200,000, right? What Akaru didn't realize at the time was that he was about to change the way people thought about chess forever. Unlike many other notable players out there, Akaru was approachable. He first began streaming part-time in 2017 and came to understand quickly how best to keep his audience engaged. He interacted with his chat and tried to make his streams both educational and fun. By late 2019, about 2,000 people would tune in to watch Akaru play. But as more time passed, that number jumped to about 20,000 viewers, with the chess category on Twitch growing sixfold. By the time summer rolled around, the game had become so popular that Chess.com partnered with Twitch to bring its viewers PogChamps, a chess tournament featuring several notable streamers, with Akaru providing commentary for the event. I win though, right? Oh I win? My I win though, right? Because she was white and she was That's favorite. That's a hard one. Hikaru, I you win. seem... Uh, I win! Nice. Well, I, I mean, the, 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 the issue I have with that is that he gave up the knight, and it, the only reason you should give up the knight is if you're 100% sure you know how to make the checkmate. The choice of commentator seemed obvious. Hikaru's on-stream antics like playing hmm. blindfolded or doing chess challenge runs had encouraged some of Twitch's biggest stars to give the game a try. And no matter what his opponent's skill level was, Mizzy Hikaru Wizzy. always made sure they walked away feeling like they learned something. Just do some puzzles, just play a little bit, and... Um... And and you'll 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 you won't lose in six moves. I can assure you of that much. Oh, that's that's big. So that's big. Yeah. <laughs> thank thank you for the kind words of telling me I won't yeah. lose in six turns. That's no, actually very I nice. Mean, I mean, no problem. And like, I, I think like closer to the event when there's time. If, like, if you if you want it, if you oh want right, this one he's gonna play pog champs. That's right. Yeah. We can, we can do more. And Takaru learned something too that it was possible to take a traditionally dry and serious game like chess and combine it with the ridiculousness of Twitch culture. Oh, same jacket. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I sucked out. Oh, I'm so terrible at chess. Hikaru's unique offering as a content creator couldn't be denied. And in August of 2020, TSM swooped in, adding him to their roster of streaming talent. But not everyone saw Hikaru's willingness to be Twitch's chess ambassador as a good thing. Some thought he was compromising the integrity of the game by playing with amateurs simply to bolster his channel's popularity. So obviously if you're a normal person who has talent, like Magnus Carlsen or, you know, uh, MVL, Kramnik, you know, you ignore people with no talent, but Hikaru's like, oh, that guy has more money than me and he gets more viewers, so I'm gonna try to get in on that. And there were other chess streamers who felt like sometimes he was trying to be king of the board. When Hikaru was doing commentary on his channel for stuff, we were told to not do our commentary at the same time. Three days before the event was finishing and we were planning ours that we were gonna host, we said, oh, we totally forgot about something, but 100% we need to make it on Hikaru's channel. And I said, you know, that feels a bit disingenuous. And that is when they cut off contact with us and said, oh, well, now you're calling us liars, so actually we're gonna do the event entirely by ourselves. So, uh, it's just, it's fake. Still, chess all right, was Hikaru's I, All right, life. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually dedicated? stop this and say one thing about this, just to be very clear. Um, so in, in general terms, in terms of what this had to deal with, uh, when, when, they, when they talk about like saying like, is disingenuous or it has to be on my channel, there, there is a reason for that. It's because I do have a contract with TSM um, that does, re does require me to do certain things. So that's the first thing I'm gonna say um, uh, in, in regards to that drama, which I think is really, really important to note. Um, I, I have no problem saying that because there's just a misunderstanding on their part. Um, and then beyond that, it's it's kind of interesting that, that at the time they called me fake because many people could make some argument that in regards to Botez, um, them streaming chess and just chatting was kind of only caring about viewers and not caring about chess. So I, like, there are issues on both sides potentially, which I think is it's important to note. Um, and I think that should be stated. That being said, that being said, you guys, what, 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 will, what I will say to be clear is there is no drama going on right now. There is nothing. There is no bad blood or anything along those lines. But I think a lot of things that happen are based on misunderstanding and people not really understanding where 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 people are coming from. And it's very easy because, of course, one thing that's really important with streaming to note is that people have um, 
people are very busy when you're streaming you're trying to create content it's not something where like oh i just boot up five hours i go to bed i go outside for, for like five hours and i just chill that's not how it works um so it's really important that people keep that in mind and i think it's very hard because everyone's doing their own thing everyone is tired everyone's streaming every day and um and that's just the nature of it so that, that's what i would say um believe everything you see on the internet yeah totally okay let's keep going himself to it completely having never even had a job outside of playing the game and he was determined to bring his passion into the masses that embraced him no matter what anyone had to say but for much of my career much of my life i've sort of been the bad guy i'm not someone who has been liked very very often times i've always been perceived as the person who people don't want to root for who people don't like and and so to have all the support by the way look at levy here levy looks like levy looks so different here maybe it's just it maybe it's just the cam quality but man levy looks so so different in this uh in this video man he looks like maybe it's just me but he looks like he's like 18 years old here i don't know he looks so young he looks so young he, he literally he literally looks like he, he he looks so young it's crazy all right let's keep going from you guys um you know to sort of know that there are fans who do support me um it does mean a lot and that, that's that's kind of the biggest difference for me with now versus much of my chess career not that hikaru was a stranger to tense standoffs his well publicized yeah that game oh my god like i will just tell you that not game that was so was painful because this game like I remember this game, like we reached some end game where I was suffering in the opening, the middle game. And then, then like in the late middle game, I made a blunder going into the end game and I was just down a pawn. And this was such a brutal game to lose such a brutal game. So, so rough. A stranger to tense standoffs, his well publicized rivalry with fellow GM and current world champion Magnus Carlsen has been gossip fodder in the chess world for years. True. <laughs> this video. <laughs> <laughs> this video is crazy. <laughs> At the end of the day, though, there were no real hard feelings between the two. Yeah, that... Yeah, there are no hard feelings, obviously, but this, of course, is, was a very special moment At for the end me of the this, day, though, this position because this was actually the first time that I beat Magnus in a, in a slow classical game over the board. It was in Bilbao. I believe it was 2017 as well. I could be wrong, but it was the first time I beat him in a, in a game of classical chess over the board. Um, and it was kind of weird because this tournament we were playing, I think it was like we were playing like in a in an we were playing like in an auditorium or something. It was like where they have theater production. So it was it was 2016 Bilbao. It wasn't 2017. Okay. Anyway, yeah. And also those of you who are wondering, there's a Red Bull can because at the time I was sponsored by Red Bull. Now though, we are no longer sponsored by Red Bull. We are in fact sponsored by G Fuel. So make sure to go to gfuel.com and check out all the different flavors that they have. They they uh they they give you better energy. Let's leave it at that. Let's keep going. There were no real hard feelings between the two. And, and the reason that I have the issues with Magnus, or at least I've had the issues in these online events, very specifically is because Magnus is slightly better at defending, slightly better at pressing mm -hmm. endgame, so he has this very slight margin. When you're playing against someone who's slightly, who does these things, I mean, I wouldn't even say there's a big difference, but he does all these little things slightly better. That's when you kind of have to start mixing up with the style and playing differently. Mm -hmm. The Renaissance chess experienced on Twitch, thanks in no small part to Hikaru, boy, boy. ended up bringing the game of chess back into the mainstream. And with the success of shows like Netflix's The Queen's Gambit, it doesn't look like it's returning to obscurity anytime soon. Can you imagine Magnus and I playing? It's like, good game, dude. Here's a hug. Like, yeah, that would never, that would never happen. Um, of course, now that I say that, yeah, now that I say that, <laughs> probably for the meme, something weird like that will happen. It's hard to deny that Hikaru Nakamura is the instrumental force behind the world's renewed interest in chess. And for him, the continued popularity of chess on Twitch and beyond means only one thing. Hikaru can continue to keep his opponents in check for a long time to come. To have all you guys watching, all the things that I've done over the last year and a half, two years, like, it's not something where, like, you know, I'm, I'm just doing whatever and random and blah, blah, blah. Like, you have to work very hard to be successful. And I feel like acting like these people are just, like, doing, doing nothing, like, I mean, it just, it just, it's just showing a lack of understanding of how Twitch how the internet, how YouTube, how all these platforms work. That was a great video. Thanks for watching. That if was a great video. Content... That amazing video. Um, and I would say again, I can I can only re reiterate it so many times, but at the end of the day, uh, the, the two things that I, I basically, I hold very near and dear to my heart. The first thing is really important is again, 
when you do events for chess, you want people to have a good time. It's not solely about promoting the game. You want these streamers to get something out of it. It's one of those things where I think when you have streamers, people who have worked so hard to become so successful, um, like it's just one of those situations where you want them to feel good about themselves. You don't want something where it's like, okay, someone loses, they feel insulted or they feel badly. And at the end of the day, that's what it, that's, that's my, that's my general take. Um,